Hello everybody, welcome back to Graceful Embroidery. It's been a little while, but today we're going to look at how, one way in which we can make a machine embroidered card. I hope you find this useful, but this is not the only way of doing it. There are many ways. This is the seventh design, design number seven from Renaissance Fuchsias One. I'm actually stitching it out in a five by seven hoop, but it is, it can be stitched out in a four by four. And I made just a few alterations when I stitched this out. When I did these two buds, um, I stitched it again, just to give them a little bit more of a proud look. And I noticed that doing that, I've got a tiny bit of show through of bobbin thread, but I do have some red, red felt pens and I use those to cheat. Um, I've changed the colours here. Um, this lower white here is 1071 and I went for a soft white at the top. Um, so that that is the design. Now what I've done is I've put this in my software and I actually have given it a frame. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take this out of the hoop and take the um, the backing off and the and the fixing stitches, trim it up and press it. And what I'm going to do is I've got this nice frame shape and I'm going to try and use that to cut the card. And first of all, it's going to do the outline and that hopefully will cut the card so I can remove the center. Then I'm going to whip the fuchsia underneath and the satin border will hopefully keep everything in place. Well, that's the plan. Not done this before, so we'll just have to see how it all works out. I've taken it out of the hoop and uh, I've just removed the um, the basting stitches that are holding it in place. So I've done a little bit of tidying up and I've stitched, this was stitched on two layers of stitch and tear. I'll take the top layer off. And then remove the small layer that's just been floated on the top and held in place with a little bit of temporary adhesive. Just go in there and take that bit out there. Right, I think that's most of the stabiliser taken out. Just a little bit of tidying up of threads to do. And I can see another bit of stabiliser that needs removing. Now I find I don't mind removing um, the stitch and tear stabiliser because you, as you can see it's it's almost it's almost been cut away by the stitches. Just got to put that down here. Take off that bit there. The more stabiliser you remove the better but you have to be aware that on a design like this there's going to be stabilizer under under the fuchsia here and that's impossible to take out and because I've stitched this on silk it can't be washed away so when I press I'm sure you've seen my method I start at the outside and slowly sort of work in rather than put my iron down over the whole embroidery and I'm pulling the, the fabric as well because these are quite dense stitches. Great, that's lovely, that's looking good. Now one of the most important things or the first thing to think about when you're making an embroidered card is is the card that you're going to use. Now this card is only double. The best cards are the triple fold ones where you can have another bit over here and fold over and hide the back of your embroidery. I haven't been able to get one of those um, so I'm going to stick another piece of card over there. But the next thing I've done there is hardly visible is I've made tiny little marks so that I can see where the centre is. And if we get our ruler 
and hold. We're going to cut out the middle so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of pencil mark there. Now I'm using a I'm using an off-white hammered card here. Um, it's uh, I thought it'd be really easy to find just what I wanted, but that wasn't the case. So this is why I took that design and I made a beautiful frame for it. Now we're going to put this on our hoop. Now, this is probably the most disgusting hoop you've ever seen. It's one of my original 5x7 hoops, which is what I'm using to, um, to stitch out this design. Now, there's our tiny little hole, and if we look very carefully, we can see where that middle is. And I don't know why I use this one, because I have got another one which I've cleaned. Now, I've put one lot of... Um, temporary adhesive there in, in on the one layer of first stitch and tear and that's almost holding the play the, the card in place but nothing's going to move it's card it's not fabric it's not stretchy um, so I'm going to take this over to the machine and check my alignment it's quite strange hooping card if you've never done it before And you think, oh dear, things are going to move because you can't push it down. But don't worry about that. It will all be held in place when uh, when it's stitched out. Now, let's look at the design. I'm going to take you up and over so you can see on the screen the shape. That's the frame that we're going to use to and you can see the design in the middle there i'm just checking the corners for the placement of the design yeah i think that's okay so we're going to start stitching the 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 the, the frame out and i'm going to stop when it's done the the, the under stitches basically the shape then i'll take out the middle and hopefully we'll put the other design underneath with a little bit of batting, I think. I always like to put a little bit of batting behind my embroidery cards so that they stick out. Right. I think it'd be a good idea to take the speed down. And let's see what happens. see the shape there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear carefully take it off the hoop and see <laughs> if I can push out the middle if not then I will have to repeat those stitches again and obviously you've got to be very careful that once you've used your needle for card that you replace it afterwards before you do any other embroidery right I've never done this before so first of all I'm going to going to cut the stabilizer And take out the middle. Right. No, that that is not sufficient. So I'm going to do it again. Now, as I explained, this is an experiment, and uh, because it's not gone quite to plan, I'm cutting out the edge. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that the last time I made a card like this and I did the satin border and let that cut the card I didn't have a lovely sharp edge now. 
it's it's probably quite ambitious for me to do this um, because of the curves if you're not careful you you bend the card and I'm breaking all the rules by using my nice sharp scissors which I shall have to sharpen afterwards but I'm hoping that the satin stitches will hold everything down and it won't look too terrible but this is how we discover new techniques in machine embroidery we play around now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over and put it over there and I'm going to trim some of the silk off this. Now at this point I've got to be really careful that I don't take too much off. I'm just going to take a couple of inches each side. And as you can see, when I use silk I always cut it with my pinking shears because it frays so easily. I'll just take a bit off there. And if these pieces are big enough, they go in my little box for when I make romantic crazy quilts. Right. Now, the idea is that it sits like that and I need my tape, which is the other side of the room, to hold it in place. Have I got any here? No, excuse me a minute. Right, I'm just going to hold it in place at the top there, and I'm going to turn it over and see how it's sitting in that aperture. Now, there's the middle. There seems to be just a little bit too much at the top, so it needs moving up just a weeny bit. The lovely thing about Silk Dupion is it's, as well as being so forgiving, because it's got lines on it, it's, it's great for, oh dear, that's terribly wrong, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that down and offer this up in the place that I think it should be. Yeah, I think my plan was that these leaves should go into that area there. Now hopefully that's stuck there. Turn it over and I'm going to stitch it, up, uh, stick it at the bottom and take off just a little bit more at the side so that I can secure it in place there as well. I'm just looking at those lines. Whoops, I knocked the camera, I do apologise. Just looking at those lines and making sure that they are straight because if they're not it will with the batting behind it will really stand out as being a mistake. This card is for my sister. As you know, I I love making embroidered cards for her at Christmas and for her birthday. And it's her birthday this week, which is why I'm making this card. We both grow lots of fuchsias in our garden. That's not laying flat. Quite an art to getting this bit just right and getting it nice and flat too. I could have used um, could have used uh, temporary adhesive to hold it in place too. I'm just showing you alternative ways of using these things right. As you can see, it's moved again. I'm going to stop, cap stop the camera and move directly in front. These things are always so much harder to do when you're filming. Right, I think that's in the right position now. I have, I'll cut that to, uh, going to put a, a little bit of batting on the back. 
Now I will use temporary adhesive for that. And the main thing is that it just fits over the aperture like that. And now I'm going to take this to the machine and we're going to finish the frame and see whether this works or whether it's a disaster. Now I've put this, I've attached it to the embroidery hoop and um, we're going to see how well this uh, this stitches. I actually found out this this happened by mistake because I actually embroidered something on a card and lo and behold when I did the outline it cut the um, it cut the card and so this is how I found this method of using um, embroidery stitches to, uh, to cut. Now if I go back to the digitizing no doubt if I make these underlaying stitches you can see there's two rows and I'm going to do this outer row again because it will hold everything in place. If they were a lot smaller, closer together, and your, my card wasn't quite as thick, then maybe they would have worked. Right, now that looks good. Let's hope it still looks, looks even better when we've stitched it out. 204, yeah. What I forgot to say was you must be very careful when you offer up layers that are not absolutely secure underneath your hoop. Be very careful when you hoop them up that they don't move. Now I've stopped the design at the point where it's going to start doing the underlay. It's done the outline um, and it's going to do the, um, the underlay but I'm going to stop the camera because if I try and take this off the hoop it will shoot it across the room. Um, so it looks okay, it's not too bad. I'm just going to check that everything is in position and looking good before I stitch the, the frame. it out and I've taken it out of the hoop um, on the back um, obviously I've got to trim away the the batting and tidy up the the silk and remove this stabilizer it's not perfect it's tending to bulge a little bit which probably means that I didn't put it in tight enough but if I put another bit of batting, float another bit inside there, that will push it out. Because if you notice, if I sort of push it out with my hands, it looks a lot better. So I'm going to put another layer of batting in. The edging is almost perfect. The card's showing in a few places, so I'm going to go in and do a little bit of surgery there. On reflection, I think the frame should have been a little bit wider and the stitches not so far over to the edge. Now, I know everybody's going to ask me for this frame and I'm going to make it available um, and I'll leave links and details to that. So I'm going to make the the frame wider and the underlay stitch, uh, the, the first stitches that are under the underlay, I'm going to make them smaller so hopefully they pierce your card. A lot depends on how thick your card is um, but uh, overall I'm quite pleased. I've not got quite got 
got it in the middle uh, it's not bad centered this way but it could have been better the other way and I found another one of these cards so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to put it on the back um, to cover up all this um, but that is a one way of making machine embroidered cards and uh, no doubt you'd like to see a few other ways of doing it and I'll show you how this is all finished out. I hope you found that useful. It was certainly an experiment. The other option is just to stitch this frame and just mount the, uh, the design behind it with double-sided uh, tape and everything. But I just wanted to see what else I could, um, could do. Hope that's been helpful. Right, here is my finished card all ready to um, construct. As you can see, I've put an extra oval of batting in there and I stuck that in place with some fabric glue. Round the edges here, I have my double-sided tape, which is, which will, when you peel these off, it will, hold the cover, the cardboard that's going to go over the top. And this is what I always use when I'm constructing my embroidery cards. And I've just put a strip on this one because you cannot put, as I found out, you cannot put double-sided tape on something like batting. It's impossible to uh, to stick it. So I'm just going to turn this over and show you. It's already looking better. And I've done a little bit of trimming. And this was one of the cards from the same set because I've not been able to find the, um, the triple fold over cards. And as you can see, I've, I've cut it just a little bit proud. Not quite so, uh, now it'll bulge there until you fold it over this side and then when you push it down here, look how that stands out with the double, lots of batting and most of the, um, the puckers have gone. I very carefully, rightly or wrongly, with my magnifying glass, this is my this is my magnifying glass that I use for all trimming and uh, close work. It's got a daylight LC LED um, light and it's, it's great the magnifying and any close work like I'm picking anything like that that's what I use that for. And once you've pushed all that down you see that work that works perfectly. So that is my card. Oops, we've got a bit of white on there, which I shall address to my sister. I shall write inside it and uh, hopefully she'll be delighted with that. So that's the basis. You do need to, uh, I thought of something that I hadn't mentioned. The, one of the important things is this was a double card, but when you've got a triple card, you've got to be very careful that you put it the right way around otherwise you'll find that your design is upside down on the back so there are lots of things to consider but don't rush but they are they are so lovely um, to make and I know my sister gets all the ones I send her out at Christmas she gets them out every year and lines them up on her mantelpiece so do try and make some embroidered cards they are so much fun to make and this has worked perfectly all right, and if, if you look really carefully, you can see tiny bits of card, but I'm going to make this frame just a little bit wider so that it doesn't happen. So do experiment. They make wonderful gifts for people that they will treasure. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial. And if you look at the links uh, afterwards, you can find out how to get hold of this frame yourself. Thank you very much. And until next time, 
happy embroidering.